Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today I'm going to do a video about how to play on Hank Williams songs. I've already done several videos about uh, different Hank Williams songs, but in this one I'm going to take a general look at the style that is appropriate to use on these songs. And uh, if you're a country fiddle player, I think that a good understanding and knowledge of Hank Williams songs is really essential. The fiddle playing of Tommy Jackson and Jerry Rivers, who played on most of these singles, is kind of the foundation of country music as it's played today. And um, it's quite formulaic stuff, so once you've got the hang of uh, how to play the, the intro, the verse, the chorus, the solo, the outro, all that kind of stuff, then you, you kind of know uh, pretty well how to play a lot of country music. I'm going to, in this video, take you through uh, a lot of different songs, just looking at different aspects of them, and uh, show you all the different things that you might need. This lesson, incidentally, is taken from a part of my Hank Williams collection, which is a PDF booklet available only on my Patreon page, which has a general introduction to Hank Williams playing, um, this description of how to do it, and then uh, 20 different Hank Williams songs with um, the intros, the backing, the solos, and all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in that, then do join me on Patreon. Let's start off with the intro, which I think if you learn nothing else uh, from a Hank Williams song, it's a, a great idea to actually learn the original intro. And these intros are quite straightforward. They're normally no more than four bars long, and they will usually be the last uh, four bars of the verse or of the chorus. Uh, they will very often start on the four chord or the five chord rather than the one chord. So if you are uh, in a situation of playing one of these songs which you've never played before, <laughs> don't take the first chord that the uh, guitarist plays as being the key, because it's not necessarily the case. Okay, so let's look at uh, the intro for Your Cheating Heart, for example, which uh, it's in the key of C, but it starts on a G, and it goes like this. Uh, that will benefit from double stops or drones, but we'll come on to that a bit later. Let me just show you another intro. Uh, take these chains, which is in the key of D, but starts on an A chord. Notice that um, both of those intros had a kickoff, so uh, a couple of notes before the bar line. In the case of what we've just done, it's one, two, one, two, like that. And knowing these intros and being able to play them with confidence makes you a big asset to any band, particularly a scratch band. And um, believe me, I played in many scratch bands where <laughs> most people didn't really know what they were doing. And uh, if the fiddle player knows what they're doing on the intro, then it makes the whole thing get off to a good start. It's also a good idea to learn how to count the thing. So going back to your cheating heart, um, one, two, one. Something like that. Um, so long as you're not floundering about trying to decide how you're going to count it. A great idea if you're just getting into Hank Williams songs is to get a, a collection of them and uh, just skim the intros. Just listen to um, the first uh, four bars of each song and you'll soon get the idea of how simple they are, how formulaic they are. Um, and once you have been able to do this, if you know the song but don't know the intro, you can probably work the intro out yourself just by thinking about how the chorus is going to end. Now, before we go any further, um, whether you play all of the intros depends on who else is in the band. If you are lucky enough to be playing in a uh, four or five piece band which has a pedal steel, then you've got to swap and uh, alternate all of the different sections of these songs because almost every, one, almost every song has both fiddle and steel and they very rarely play the same thing at the same time. So some of the intros will be originally on the fiddle, some will be on the steel, and likewise the solos, the backing for the verses and so on. 
so if you do have a steel player, then you have to arrange this between yourselves, probably by going by what the original song used. But if not, if you if you don't have a steel, then um, you should take the responsibility for the intro and the backing and the solos. Now, I mentioned that uh, the first two intros I played didn't have any harmony or drones, and it is a very good idea to learn drones or harmonies on these intros because they sound much more authentic when you do. One of the techniques that I use for uh, easily finding um, double stops or harmonies is what I call the scale of sixths. And I do have a video explaining this, but if we're in the key of D, for example, uh, it, it'll be something like this. Where the melody note is on the top and the harmony is on the next string down and the next position down. So a, a D on the A string will have an F sharp on the D string. And um, you can apply this easily to any of these intros. And you can also um, uh, do little chromatic bits. So that can be... You can add those little chromatic bits. So let's just hear that intro to Cold Cold Heart. And when you get the, the chords like that last one, rather than just hitting it like that, slide either both notes up or one of the notes. There's another harmony that is sometimes used, which is quite a lot harder, and that is where the melody note is on the top and the harmony is a third below instead of a sixth below. For example, on an A scale, we would do that. Um, so there's a lot of first and third, second and fourth, and a lot of position changing. But you'll find that, for example, on the intro to Mansion on the Hill. There are a few uh, of these songs which don't actually start on the end of the chorus. And uh, one example of that is uh, Lovesick Blues, which has uh, a classic yodel type intro. And that um, intro is well worth learning because the yodel itself can be useful in solos or uh, bits of melody here and there. Okay, let's think about the chord sequence. And um, one great thing about these songs is that they mostly only have three chords and occasionally only two chords. Uh, so those chords will be the one, the four and the five. So in the key of D, for example, the one is D, G is the four, and A is the five. Um, this makes it ideal for using the scale of six, which we just talked about. And also I did a video uh, about a thing called a three chord trick. And um, that is an easy way of finding double stop notes, which lie right next to one another, which represent the, the one, the four and the five. I'm gonna give you the uh, verse to Cold Cold Heart. And this is in key of D. And the three chords here are D, the one, G, the four, and A, the five. Sometimes you will come across a chord that is not the one, four and five, and there's a very good chance that that chord is going to be the, uh, what you might call the two major. So in the key of C, for example, uh, the one chord is the C, 
The two chord, if there was one, would normally be a D minor, but very often you will hear that as an extra chord. So we've got this, the two, the four, the five, and we have that surprise chord, which is a D major. So listen through Hey Good Looking and you will uh, hear there's a couple of places where that D major chord appears. So we're starting off on a C. Here's the D. Here's the D again. Now whenever you get one of these um, two chords, it's a very good idea to emphasize the third note of that chord. So in this case it's an F sharp. And in fact, as a general rule, if you can emphasize each chord change, it's a good idea. So just by putting the E underneath, that makes that a C chord. Here's the F sharp under the, uh, the D chord. And here's a G under the G chord. And for the, uh, uh, the F chord, And the D again. And um, if you are familiar with the scale of six, then it kind of automatically takes care of those chords. It makes it a lot easier to deal with them. But do watch out for the those surprise chords because it's almost always that you can work out what the, what it is just by knowing about this t uh, second chord. There's one other chord that sometimes occurs, and it, it happened here. Um, and that is when a, uh, a C, for example, goes to a C7. And this is something that, hap that it creates movement and it, it will often take you from one section to another. So at the end of Hey Good Looking, we had, um, at the end of the first line of Hey Good Looking, so that C7 led us to an F. And when a C7 comes, then you should play the seventh note, which in this case is the B flat. So you could either go something like that, or if you were doing like filling phrases or runs, you could do something like, so the, that is saying that it's a C7 rather than just a C. The, chords, uh, the chord structure of Hank Williams songs is usually very predictable. And uh, some are extremely easy indeed, such as Jambalaya, uh, which has just two chords, and it's the same uh, pattern of two chords all the way through the song. But there are some, uh, such as Honky Tonking, which have uh, some real surprises and uh, uh, need a lot of attention. The verse on Honky Tonking is straightforward, but the chorus is very unusual. So we've got, so I'll just play it for you. there is two bars of four. One, two, three, da, 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 a bar of two, boom, boom, bar of, uh, two bars of four, two far bar, two four bar, two bars of four, two four bar. So to get around that you really do have to be familiar with the words and um, when I'm learning or teaching a Hank Williams song, I think it's a great idea always to play the verse and the chorus uh, so that you know what the voice is singing, even if you never actually play that unison. But in this case, uh, because it makes so little sense without the words, um, I think it's a very good idea to play very close to the actual chorus when you're doing this. 
If you've got one of these odd verses or choruses in the vocal, you could um, arrange with the rest of the band that you want to play your solo in a straighter way. So rather than doing a 13 bar solo, you might find a way to make it into a 12 bar, or rather than have all of these two four bars, you might straighten them out. And in fact, I'm gonna be doing a video very shortly on honky tonking, where I will suggest an alternative way of playing a solo on the chorus. Uh, a couple of other songs that have confusing bar structures are Lovesick Blues and Why Don't You Love Me. Now, um, I, I just said learn the verse and chorus, but don't necessarily play the verse and chorus. So you've got to find something different to play during those. So not only do you want to uh, know what the melody line is, you also need to know what the chords are. And this is not a difficult thing because, as I said before, they are very predictable. Um, and having worked out what the chords are, then you need to find two note or two finger chord shapes. And I do have a video about two note chord shapes and how to easily find them. So for Cold Cold Heart, for example, the D and the A might be third of a second playing the uh, D chord and second of a first playing the A chord. And you could play those just as long notes. And certainly without uh, a verse going behind that, that sounds pretty boring. Um, but the, uh, there are in places in the song that will sound very nice, just doing something as simple as that. If you want something more rhythmic, you can do offbeat chops, that kind of thing, uh, where you're playing down at the heel, you're doing a sort of a circular motion with your wrist, and you're just chopping down on the same pairs of notes. So you'll be doing this. and so on. Uh, neither of those things, just straight long notes or chops, are actually done very often at all on the original recordings, but in kind of contemporary country, both of those are very much part of the, the rhythmic language of the fiddle player, so uh, uh, worth doing some of the time, I think. Um, a much more interesting approach is um, something I describe as joined up country, and that's where by combining your two note chord shapes, so the idea is to walk from one chord to the next. So uh, going from um, a, uh, an, a D chord, then you might do that little movement. And this gives you a kind of a continuous movement. Uh, so for Cold Cold Heart, you might have... So that's much more interesting, it, it is much more productive in that you are contributing not only to the, to the rhythm and the backing, but you're also kind of uh, supporting the chords in a very real way. Um, another thing you can do with these same chord shapes is shuffles. Uh, again for Cold Cold Heart. Uh, I've got a video on the Nashville Shuffle, which is probably the most useful in this context, and also the Georgia Shuffle. Now, when it comes to soloing, um, as I said before, if there's a pedal steel player, then you'll be splitting the solos with him or her. Uh, if not, then um, you are probably going to be the main soloist. And the solo can be just a decorated version of the melody. So here, for example, is uh, a solo for Hey Good Looking. And this is the original solo for Honky Tonkin' based on the verse. Uh, 
solos, like the intros, will very often have a lead in. Uh, so, that kind of thing. Uh, so you're, you're basically cutting into the end of the previous verse or chorus before you do your solo. Sometimes I will learn the original fiddle solo and occasionally the steel solo is memorable enough to want to copy it as well. And for example on um, I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry, which is one of the few 3-4 songs, uh, it's quite a nice um, solo to follow. If you are going to not follow the melody but uh, want to improvise something then uh, it's, it's a pretty safe bet usually to use the major pentatonic scale or the major blues scale. So the pentatonic scale for D for example would be and by combining open string drones you get that good country feel. Uh, the major blues scale for D would be Any kind of phrase that you use with that scale combined with those drones is going to sound pretty good. The scale of six is very useful to use in improvised solos and there's a good example um, in the setting the woods on fire where you're going from a um, F over an A sliding it up to third position to a A over a C and then um, so you're taking that semi semitone down, up, up a semitone, like that. And there are some standard end of the line licks. Um, so at the end of a little solo in D you might do something like that. So hot dog uh, in the key of E could end like this. One, two, three, four, one. And that's a kind of a standard ending line. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, if you'd like the sheet music for all of these exercises and uh, little intros and stuff that I've done, then do subscribe to the Fiddle channel and uh, I will send you, send me an email and I'll send them to you. If you would like to get hold of my Hank Williams collection, uh, then do join me on Patreon. And uh, if you just join at the bottom level for four pounds, this will get you this collection and a whole load of other tune collections as well, and all my PDFs. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon.